What is going on guys? Root from NullShell.com here today and we are looking at some more Python. We are continuing to look at loops, or those really interesting keywords that allow you to repeat code blocks multiple times while under a certain condition or expression. So today we're going to be checking out for loops. Last, uh, last video we were looking at while loops. And for loops are, in my opinion, a little bit more powerful because you can do a lot more with them. You can still count like you could in, uh, in while loops, but for loops use a variable all the time rather than the while loop. Because you could add that while loop like we did with a counter example, but you could just, like, you don't even need to be using a while loop with a count. Well, I'm sorry, you don't have to be using a variable with a while loop. So uh, let's try with the for loop, though. Let's get idle started up. I'm going to drag this right over here so you guys can see it and create a new document, and we'll save it as, uh, you know, let's do something differently today. Let's, let's name it, uh, let's name it file, uh, dot python. Yep, that's, that looks good to me. Alright, I'm gonna get my shebang line going on here. You don't really need this if you're on Windows or anything else, but I'm gonna get started. Okay, now the for loop has a different syntax. Uh, I should have included in the little uh, side notes, but uh, it, 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 it does use a variable, like I was saying. So it uses any, any named variable. You can say counter, you can, you can call it incrementer, uh, you can, but most programmers try and keep it easy since you might not be using this variable for too much other than counting, so most people just kind of call it i. Um, only, this is usually only when you're counting, though. You can use for loops for a whole other scenario, and we're going to go in depth with that real soon in lots of other video uh, video tutorials, like the way, well, as soon as my series progresses and that sort of thing, we guys, we get more in depth with the some of the, some of the concepts and some of the subjects and some of the material, you're going to be seeing new forms of uh, for loops and that sort of thing. But, hey, okay, for i in, now we're going to use in, that membership operator that we've heard so much about, and uh, now you're going to be seeing the range function. Now the range function is interesting. It uh, this is it's usually what we use for counting in in for loops, like I've been saying. And range takes about three parameters. Uh, optionally, it could take one, two, three. I should say. If we hit Control Backslash, we can see our little call tip like we have here, and we have an optional one called Start. We can see. Uh, when what we want the program what a uh, what number we want the prog the program to start counting from so we could use zero here we could use stop and stop can be how high you want the number to count up to and then you can use a step for how much we should increment every time we add to it so we can do it with a single function we can do range we can do a single argument I mean we can do for I in range 10. So now it's going to go up to 10, while i is less than 10. We haven't set a variable, we haven't set a value for i yet, but Python will be able to recognize and understand what we're trying to get at here. In this range, it's going to return to you a string of numbers from 0 to 10, because 0 is, is by default when you don't have those other parameters, and it's going to keep iterating through those. Iterating is kind of what I want to the new terminology that I want to teach you today. It'll continue to iterate or go through another iteration each time. It's running through the code block once, it's running through the code block again, and now it has new values because i is different. So if we print out, we are at, and we can cat on, we can concatenate the string value of i. So now we, we when we, uh, let's actually get a little notification, and we use a tab just so we can see this coming out. Uh, program starts New line. I'm gonna copy this. Get down to the end of the program. Do it once more with program ends, and we'll put a new line here instead. So let's run this. F5. Program starts, and then we start counting. We're at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is kind of a similar example as to what we saw with the while loop, except we've indented it because I think it looks pretty. So. Now we can experiment with this range function a little more though. We had, we know by default it'll start counting from zero and then go up to whatever argument you pass to it. So what if we did just from two, from two to 10? It'll start at two and then continue to go up to 10. Uh, you can see this over on little side notes, but let's try it. 
program starts, and now he goes from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it stops before it gets to 10. So that makes sense. It'll take what we pass as the first argument to start from, so i is equal to zero, equal to 2 in this case, sorry, and it'll keep going until it's less than 10, or less than that other parameter. Now we can use a different sort of, uh, different parameter structure, and we can use 0 to 10, and we're going to increment by 5s. Now this should only run twice. You'll have, it'll start at 0, it'll go to 5, and then it won't run anymore because it'll be greater than 10 at that point. So let's try it. F5, program starts, we're at 0, and then we're at 5, and then when we add on, if we were to add on to it again, we'd be, we would be at 10, and that's less than 10. It's, I'm sorry, that, that's greater than, it's equal to 10, it's not, it's not less than 10. So it's going to stop that. But if we actually checked out the value of i when we were done counting, what would it be at? What do you guys think? It's at 5. So the range function knows whether or not the next calculation will bring it above that range. So if it is, it won't do it. But now we've tr now that it's at i, now that i is at 5, what if we did this whole iteration again? What if we uh, pasted that in? Oh, it's not gonna let me. Uh, it's not gonna let me paste that in. What are you? What are you saying to me? What are you? What are you? What are you doing? All right, whatever. I'll just retype it. For i in range, da 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 da. So you guys have to sit through this. Ten five. Prints. You're counting at plus the string of i. Give myself a little space there, so that looks good. So now, what if we did all of this once more? Do you think it'll take that i and go up to it'll? Do you think it'll take five and then continue to do it again? So it's from zero to ten. Let's try it one more time. It goes from zero to five, and it goes stays at five, but then it, re it retreats back to zero. That's interesting, though. I think I, I'm thinking it's setting this first argument that we set it to to i. What if we didn't supply that though? What if we just go here and then we do it again? Oh, it starts at zero. So let's let's sort of dissect or take another look at that range function. If we're in the interpreter here, the interactive shell, and we just type in range, let's say ten. It's going to return us with a list, and this is a new concept that I want to be teaching you guys in the next tutorial because it's it's kind of interesting. It's a lot of values. It's it's multiple pieces of data put together into one. So we go from zero to one to two. To, so whenever i is in here, because i is a variable and it can mean anything, it goes from zero to one to two to three to four to five and all these things. It's not using the current value of i. It's go. It's seeing what it finds in here. Hence the membership operator in. So. That's that's a little bit of an interesting look at counting with Python in in for loops. And now that we're going to get into some later videos and some more concepts and more ideas, you'll be able to see it in different in different formats and different structures. So the for loop is incredibly powerful, and I use it almost constantly in my programs. So I want you to be able to have that understanding and know that concept. But uh, yep. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you again in the next tutorial. We can check out some more cool stuff. Have a great day.